They got a bigger line than we do, too. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't think we have to worry about it, though. If Dean can hit Andy with a couple passes, we'll be in. Yeah, yeah it'll right. work all right. Hey, uh, you guys, uh, you guys want to hear something? That depends on what it is. Well, this, this is too good to keep. The other night, I was out with Susan Harper. Susan? Yeah. Oh, maybe I shouldn't have said anything. You're not going steady with her, are you? No. Oh, well, in that case, uh, I stay at home from the library. Yeah. Susan said that? Yeah, that's what oh, she said. No kidding. No. Yeah. Hey, there's Bill. We better well, go. I got Daisy, guys. Okay, See you okay, back in there. I think he's just bragging. I doubt if he even had a date with Susan. Mel's the kind of guy who'd say anything to get some attention. See you, Frank. This looks pretty good. Why don't we stay right here, Susan? Fine. Let's see. I'll ask you some questions from the end of the chapter. Then you can ask me some. Okay. Ready? Why is force a vector quantity? Because it has both magnitude and direction. That's right. Uh, now, uh, what instrument is normally used for measuring force? That's the next question, Dean. What instrument is normally used for measuring force? Susan, did you go out with Mel Stone? Why, no. Why? I just wondered. He gave me a ride home from the library the other night. That's all. I don't like him very much. He kept telling me about all the girls he'd been out with. Here, I think you better ask me the questions for a while. Okay. Let's see. Well, here's, here's one. Why don't you give me Newton's first law? Oh, I hope I can remember that. <laughs> Page 80. You know you're boning up on the wrong thing, don't you? The test covers pages 70 to 80. That's what Miss Adams told us. Yeah, I know. That's what she told everybody. But I took the test second hour this morning. I can tell you what the questions really are. I suppose the honor system applies to everybody but you and me. <laughs> okay, I was just trying to do a friend a favor. Excuse me. I see Marilyn, and I want to give her back the pen I borrowed. Bye, Dean. Bye, Susan. Boy, she sure is a nice-looking girl. She's nice, period. Oh, hey, Dean. Hey, Dean. Uh, how's football practice coming? We keep at it. Yeah, I was, I was watching scrimmage the other day. You, you look real good. You know that, that long pass you threw? Uh, how long was that? 35 yards? I don't know. It might have been. <laughs> yeah, it might have been if Andy caught us. You know, I'm, I'm crazy about football. Oh, I always have been. I used to play it all the time when I was little. Only thing, I stayed little. But, you know, I never got over liking it. I, I bet I know those plays as well as you guys do. I mean, I watch them that close. It's very interesting. Yeah, that's how come I can spot it when somebody's not doing his job, like, uh... Like Andy not catching that pass? I wonder, I wonder if the coach knows Andy's breaking training. What do you say? Yeah, I thought you'd be interested. I thought you'd like to know where the foul up is, because you can't win that game with East High by yourself, and Andy's letting you down. Listen, Mel, you start spreading guff like that around, and I'll personally shut you up. It's not guff! It's true, the other night at 10.30, I saw him walking down Jefferson Street, and he's supposed to be in bed at 10. Yeah, as a matter of fact, that was the night I took Susan home from the library. Ask her if you don't believe me. How I was coming back from taking her home when I saw it. I think somebody ought to tell the coach, don't you? I told you, if you start spreading anything against oh, Andy... Well, why should I tell the coach anything? It's your team. Oh, forget it. Okay, suit yourself. I still think you ought to tell him. Go 
gang. Put one. Put two. Take it easy, Andy. We'll get it next time. Okay. Staying up late at night or something? Who told you? Nobody has to tell me your timing's all off. You act like you're all tired out or something. I get plenty of sleep. Look, Dean, I wasn't actually lying to you. I've got to do this. Believe me, I've got to. I don't get it. You know how important that game is, and you know what the training rules are. You bet I know how important that game is. And that's why I've been out walking late at night when nobody could see me. But I didn't lie. I get plenty of sleep. I take a nap every night, right after supper, before I start studying. I just go out for a walk just before I go to bed. But why? That bad knee. In the last game, I got it twisted. Just a little bit. But you know what the coach said. If it ever bothered me again, I was through. I just couldn't let him or anybody see me exercising. I've had to do the work on my own. Andy, you might be hurting yourself. I think you better tell the team doctor. And get sidelined? No, sir. I know what I'm doing. Tomorrow's my last game, and I intend to play in it. The walking I've been doing is working. That knee's a lot better than it was three days ago. I still don't like it. I wish you'd tell the coach or the doctor. I'll be all right, Dean. Don't worry about me. You'd better worry about getting home and getting some sleep yourself. You didn't have a nap after supper. Wouldn't you know it? Mel Stone. Do you think he saw us? I think he saw us. <laughs> Third down on the 27-yard line. My, my, our All-American boys are getting clobbered. Pass interception and touchdown for East High by six. The kick was no good. Come on, gang, let's go! First and ten on the 35-yard line. The ball carrier is working. Number 11. It's Andy. He's hurt. Get up, Andy. The injured player is Andy McBride. Go, go. Come on, gang. Get with it. Come on, you guys. Quit loafing. You're not hurt. Let's play ball. Is he hurt or just tired? I may have to ask that little question at the dance tonight. I guess they're tired after the game. Susan, you can't have much of a victory celebration without a victory. Don't feel badly. We all knew they were going to be tough. I just hope Andy isn't hurt seriously. Uh-oh, look who's coming. Oh, why, uh, why, why so glum, football hero? You, you didn't actually expect to win against guys who stick to training, did you? Mel. <laughs> That's right, Susan. You don't know about Dean and Andy, do you? I know they played a hard game against a team that was a lot bigger than they were. Let it go, Susan. It doesn't matter. Well, it does to me. You know what I think of you, Mel. 
I think you're just plain jealous of Dean and Andy. They're athletes, and they get along well in class. And everybody likes them. And you just can't stand that. Boy, she's, she's really sold on you, isn't she? I guess you didn't tell her where you were late last night. I, I guess she doesn't know why you played such a rotten game. Dean, what's he talking about? Why don't you get lost, Mel? What good is all this doing you anyway? Did you hear? The, the lady wants to know what I'm talking about. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> sure you do. You're just dying to hear it. As a matter of fact, everybody here is dying to hear it. Go ahead, make a speech, hero. Please, Mel. Are you going to speak up, Deanie boy, or shall I tell? You're bothering us. Beat it. <laughs> In almost every group you find him, the troublemaker, who hurts himself and the others around him. What makes a person like Mel act the way he does? Is the group ever at fault? How would you cope with someone like Mel in your group? Could you help him? What do you think?